the third of July, we saw the young people take it to the street against the fight of corruption. What we noticed was peaceful demonstrators who took it to the streets, but then we were, were met with brutal uh, force from the police. And tonight we're discussing the state versus the people. Are there winners? Are there losers? Joining me to discuss this very interesting conversation is a panel of distinguished ladies and gentlemen who will help us unpack this conversation and put into perspective what the young people feel about this very pertinent conversation. I'll just begin from my extreme right to my immediate right, and then um, we can immediately start the conversation. Danita, you're most welcome. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Drake. Um, my name is Tori Hodanita, and I usually am a concerned citizen. Now I'm an even more concerned citizen. So it's lovely to be here. Lovely to have you too as well. The only gentleman on the show, of course. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Drake. My name is Ian. <laughs> Ian Agawa, I'm a co-founder of a Better Life International Organization. That essentially means that I'm advocating for a better life. Thank you. Thank you. We're very happy to have you here, founder. <coughs> yeah. Founder. Oh, all right. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> My name is Denise Ayemare. I am just a Ugandan and African holding a Ugandan passport. So that essentially means I'm a Pan-Africanist and a climate justice activist. I can see the earrings speak for itself and the dress for the entire <laughs> So that just speaks volumes. So you just look at you right now, we can definitely tell. The future of Africa. Definitely. <laughs> it's bright. Agenda 26. All right, let's begin the conversation. I'd like to begin with you, Danita. You've been on the front line. Um, <coughs> All of you have been in the front line, but the NATO has been pretty involved in trying to s solicit for money to help um, bail out most of our colleagues who have been held uh, hostage in most of these detention centers. I don't call them uh, because some, some detention centers are actually not provided by the law <coughs> in our constitution. But let's bring us up to speed, Danita. Give us context to this conversation because we're, to, we're looking at the state versus the people. So, what is your perspective to that conversation or to this particular conversation? Well, what is my perspective to this conversation? It, you know, let me just start by saying this is a conversation we must all be involved in. Whether you be in, the, in whatever capacity you can, you must all be involved in. On the 23rd, a number of us, majority of them young people, my age met students like myself, took to the streets to decide that because they were against corruption, a legal constitutional protest. They were curtailed, they were bundled up in cars and they were taken off to detention and some of them were taken majority of them were taken to cps majority of them to ginger road and they were brought before courts and they were de remanded to lizera so over the course of the next week until 19th we're going to see a, num a number of them come before courts yesterday about 14 people were granted bail so that's a great thing but what bothers me about this situation and Aside from the fact that this was a legal protest, like this was an entirely legal protest, now they're being charged with common nuisance. Just Ugandan citizens ex exercising their constitutional rights have been charged with this most horrendous crime. A crime that can take you about a year in prison. I believe that's what the penal code says. So um, what we see here is a deliberate move by the state to curb all levels of discourse at any level. Now, the great slogan around this campaign has been Anita must resign. The Speaker of Parliament, of Parliament must step down because she has failed in every capacity to exhibit a morally stable character. Ugandans are suffering. You go into Mulago, you sit down, you cannot access basic health facilities unless you produce money. You are there, you're covered in blood because you've been brought in by an act for an accident, and you cannot access basic um, basic uh, healthcare facilities. And yet we have this lady <coughs> wearing clothes, one outfit, $17,000. I do not understand how it can be done. I do not understand how Ugandans are expected to sit down and accept all this being done in their faces. So the question is, the, 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 the whole thing that this thing was encompassing was just Anita must resign, a very logical, a very logical demand given the circumstances and state of affairs. And yet this was just met with them being over 100 people right now. We're looking about a, 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 about 130 people. From Tuesday last week, it, hasn't been, it has been a week exactly. 130 people have been bundled up by the state, put in prison. Some of them have vanished. We do not, we have, 
some of them are unaccounted for. Some of them went to Luzira without going through the proper court trial process. Yeah. It is wild. Every facility in this country has fallen apart. The judiciary has refused to take <coughs> accountability for the fact that it is now a mechanism for the state. The, legis the parliament has gone quiet. Last week we had the, the speaker say she's, um, the plenary has gone on hold until, I've forgotten the date exactly, but plenary has until gone on hold. Until 30th. And yet that's on recess. Yeah. So that's about today, actually. Yeah. As soon as the protests happen, they decide that the, the speaker decides we're gonna have we're gonna curtail all means of expression in this country. This has been a wild situation. The, the opposition has failed to come behind. I know this has been a non-partisan protest, but at the very least, we expect religious leaders, the opposition, basic members of society to come out, leaders of all capacities to come out in support of these people. And yet it has been basic people, average people like you and I, that have been going out to the courts that have been fundraising <coughs> for these people. All the people we expected in these moments, like in Kenya, because most of the, a lot of people have accused us of, uh, or accuse the protesters of just trying to mirror what has been happening in Kenya, not negating the fact that this is a Ugandan situation. This is a Ugandan situation. What Ugandan they're dealing with. This, yeah. this is a Ugandan problem. It's a historical problem. These are people, a, a good number yeah. of the people who took to the streets are people who have been doing so since their university days. They have been going around protesting things like freezing increments in public universities. So this isn't just people, um, this isn't just people mirroring um, what is happening in another country. This is Ugandan standing up against Ugandan problems in a Ugandan context. So let us not minimize what they're doing by saying we are trying to mirror <coughs> Kenya. We're not trying to mirror Kenya. We're trying to address a Ugandan problem. And it's very disappointing. I have been completely, completely, completely downfounded by the level of silence I have seen. There have been accusations that some of these gentlemen have been sodomized in prison. All the anti-homosexuality um, activists we have have been quiet. Get to that <laughs> on the show. I see you're pumped up for the conversation. I'm That's just, it's irritating. It's I know, irritating. I understand. Denise, <coughs> just want to bring in the family um, Legally speaking, the constitution, uh, the, the, the document, I will just refer to it as a document now, because the state has decided not to abide by it. The constitution, when um, this current government came in power in 20, on 26th of, uh, of January 1986, Museveni made a very remarkable and historical speech. That the problem with Africa is leaders who overstay in power. And then later on, he also made comments that uh, power belongs to the people. And if the people decide and are against something, you must respect it as a leader. 38 years down the road. The same person um, is curtailing the rights of uh, young people who are peacefully, uh, peacefully ex uh, executing their freedom of assembly and association under the constitution in chapter 4. The people that she refers to as his grandchildren, or Bazukuru, as he usually says, are against what his government is propagating in terms of corruption. The same people that he goes ahead and, uh, and, 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 and hold, holds them hostage in prison are peacefully demonstrating without guns, without any, uh, without any ill intent, but just for a better Uganda. From the perspective of the law, but also as an activist, I'd like to pick your insights on this conversation, primarily centering it on the legality of the young people taking this to the streets and telling the state we're tired of corruption. All right, um, thank you so much, Craig. So <coughs> a couple of things to first address even before we go into the entirety of the law, what it says, and how individuals should have their rights to protest peacefully. I think, I never used to believe the statement that power corrupts, but I think Mr. President has become a real definition and a real example of the power corrupts individuals, yeah? So I, I think our problems, this uh, entire corruption probably matched the parliament, exposed the corrupt, curtails all the different things that have been happening in Uganda. When you look at individuals that cannot be able to afford sanitary, let's say sanitary pads, all the girls out there that are cannot afford this, yet you have ministers buying cars they never get to drive. Mm -hmm. You have speakers being gifted cars that they never get to drive. You have them uh, saying, oh, we are bringing you free education, but they can't afford to take their children to these schools. They tell you, oh, no, listen, we are going to give you these kind of roads, but they can't afford to drive on these roads because they don't get to fill the potholes. And you see that our problem initially as Ugandans, 
is that we have gotten to elect hyenas and expect them to take care of goats. You can't have a hyena taking care of goats. Initially, that's uh, you're going to be eaten up and all that. So now the issue of young people protesting, and we have seen a couple of protests in the past, walk to work, we have seen most of them. But I think as much as we have um, the online discussions and we have um, all these kind of trying to use our means, even technovation, one of the things is that as young people, we need to do what we do on social media. Yeah? Because on the build up of all the pressure that was on social media, when it came to people marching to the parliament, there were very few. There were very few as compared to what is on social media. And you see now the problem becomes that the people who vote the government are not even on Twitter. They are probably our grandparents, our aunts. They are the people who take on the mantle to ensure that they vote. So the <coughs> first legal right we should understand and the power that we hold as young people is our vote. The electorate holds the power to decide who is going to be accountable. But the problem of Uganda, just like all the other African countries, is that we don't buy ideologies. We buy a uh, salt, one glass of water, what is going to help me survive tomorrow? What am I going to see? But then what next is going to happen in the next five years? Mm. So even when we look at the Constitution, we should try to also exercise the other rights that exist that could potentially solve all the other problems. I think most of the times when we look at statistics and we think that, you know what, these are just uh, probably going to, be used as, um, are going to be used as examples or in textbooks and all the other rest of the things. Every person out there that speaks, whether it's a minister, whether it's a commissioner, they're definitely going to quote, oh, Uganda is made out of 73.2%. Can we see that reflect in uh, like the vote? <coughs> before even I like, go into maybe Article 7, Article 29, all these that legalize protest and show that big should be available to these individuals. Mm. I think the most powerful thing that we should recognize at the moment is that we hold the power to choose the leaders we want. If I'm probably going to vote for um, the corrupt officials, they're going to be there for five years. And all those five years, I'm going to be screaming, oh, corruption, I'm going to be screaming, oh, health care, I'm going to screaming education. But the point I decide to go down there and vote, I registered in the voters' registration book. You've never voted in your life. Yeah, I think the same for all of you. Yeah. We have never voted, but when these leaders come into power, we start protesting. But yet we had the ability to change. And I think, and most young people <coughs> now feel like there are three categories of young people. One is the working class who think, oh, I'm comfortable what I'm doing. Let those on strike. The second people are like us who are concerned, but post on <laughs> social media when it's time for action, we don't want to go. Mm. The third category, are other individuals that they call hooligans like us who don't have anything we're doing in the country. What are we doing? We are struggling to get visas to Saudi Arabia and uh, to go abroad and work. That's the kind of Uganda we are having. If we don't get concerned about the politics, even if we don't have just, just on that issue, yes. um, <clears throat> what you raise is we don't have a consorted voice yes. or a common ground or common suffering that would propel all Ugandans, all young people, to voice their concerns. We are fearing. True, we are fearing. But then the issue at hand is we have a population that others even are not aware of what is going on. You may, you may have this conversation and say we lose 9.1 trillion Ugandan shillings on corruption every year. How can we then translate that information to the best way possible for that person who is planning to go to Saudi Arabia but stay in this country and fight for what belongs to them? Drake, at this moment, when, when you, you don't even need anything to fight, for example, you see the road here just here going to Nigeria and you see how it looks like. And as a Ugandan, you're saying, oh, I'm not concerned, I need something to propel me to fight. You're struggling. Like, do you know how many Ugandans get visas denied just because they are struggling to go to UAE, they're struggling to go to Saudi to go and work for just small things that they spend and are not getting paid for? I think these are things that we need to have a discussion about. And you see, last time I saw um, a quote on Twitter that, we need the same nervous system, a central nervous system, where we feel the pain of all common the, rest, the common suffering that we feel as young Ugandans. When you look at the houses that these, uh, these corrupt thieves build, and you look at those houses, they don't even get to sleep in them. Why? Because they can't get sleep at night with all the bad things they are doing. You look at what is happening, you look at the cars, you don't have the basic <coughs> needs, and you're buying iPads for ministers who don't even know how to scroll. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense to you and you want us to feel like the pain to stay in Uganda and fight. Uh, and this is something I've already said. As Ugandans, we are hopeless. Mm -hmm. But the means which require us to restore our governance, and I think corruption is just a symptom of bad governance and leadership. Mm -hmm. The real thing should be how do we remove bad governance? How do we remove the bad leadership? And 
That's the biggest thing that we need. Because when you look at millions, like Janita said, who die in hospitals, the road accidents. And for example, when on a remember you just uh, get something very bad in Kanu, they try him in a chopper. And for you, you're just there, you can't even access Panadol when you have a headache. So these are things that we need a discussion about. And as young Ugandans, we have seen them. But we don't want to take on the mantle to fight for a change that we want to see. Right. Ian, a few months back, I was in West Nile. And I think I shared the story with Anita and also Denise herself. Um, that I went to a, a lively a homestead of a fairly old couple, but also have young children. Their daughter <coughs> got pregnant to some guy, who's just a young man such as me and you. And this lady, um, when she was in labor, because she had come to visit her parents, there was a community game that was going on. Yeah? So they had come to, to cheer the, the, the local people. So this lady gets into labor in the night. And they, she couldn't be uh, taken to the hospital late in the night because one, the roads are bad. Yeah. Two, they had no means of transporting her to the hospital because they didn't have transport. So they had to wait for her in her labor till morning to take her to the hospital. By the time morning reached, they couldn't take her to the nearest hospital because well, the nearest hospital didn't have the facilities, so they had to take her to a different uh, sub-county to, to give birth. And guess what? By the time she reached, she lost her life. Unfortunately, she lost her life. And that's just a story among very many. Yeah. Mothers <coughs> who are losing their lives because of one, issues of, of bad governance that culminate into not providing social services such as proper health care, good roads that would enable citizens to access these facilities. At times I couldn't help but wonder that we have statistics that just emulate or depict a small margin of the greater majority of Ugandans who are suffering. And my question to you is, with all that is going on in this country, with all the bad governance that we're experiencing, people seem to be somewhat comfortable with this idea of peace. Yeah. What can we do to change that? Because the idea is we, we are not peaceful. We are not peaceful because we are poor people. We are not peaceful because we are dying, we don't have medicines in hospitals. We are not peaceful because we cannot afford school fees. What can we do to change that idea of peace? Yeah, I think in the first place, um, I'll first talk about constitutionally what, what people should know. Because majority of the people down there don't know that actually they, they have to have these rights. If you tell someone that uh, they have to go to hospitals and find their medication, they'll be like, oh, I thought I have to buy medicine. They forget the purpose of the government. I think the other day you saw uh, Chiza Besija when he was saying that majority of the people don't know what is their right. So I think that is the first problem. But you see, human rights and most of these services are granted to someone at the time of birth. And we have seen most of the case laws and even the constitution, chapter 4, article 20, talks about it. Um, Nakazima versus Atone Geno, Tinyefuza versus Atone Geno. A lot of cases have been able to talk about this issue. That as long as you're, you're on earth, you have to access these services. So I think in the first place, what we need to do as Ugandans, for us that have been able to attain education services, because in as much as we are saying that we are peaceful, you need to also understand that there are various people down there that have not even gotten a chance to study. There are people that have actually accessed only UPE and USE. The reason as to why uh, General M7 has banned uh, course units like political science, course units like... Uh, deep uh, studying political yeah, political education mm -hmm. is, is, is because he doesn't want the people to appreciate what is happening on ground and what they should actually be having. So what I think then that we should do as, as, as us who, are already, who already know what should be done is first to actually educate these people down there to tell them that you know what, you are supposed to be benefiting this right. So for, for, for someone to have that sort of uh, that sort of purpose of fighting for their own right, they have to first know which right are they fighting for. Because you cannot say that people are actually comfortable. People are not comfortable. People are not peaceful. But the problem is that they are fearing because we also need to know the context that we are living in, Drake. 
we are living in a military government that if you come up and say that you want to air out your demands you're actually going to be arrested you, you, you remember the message i sent you when when you, you gave me the topic i was like are we having a safe place to actually talk about our ideas simply meaning that i know that if i'm saying that we don't have medicine in the hospitals the government doesn't want me to say that so it is actually going to actually arrest me so that someone out there shouldn't know that not having medication in hospitals is something that should be granted by the state so we are living in fear i everybody can tell you and 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 i'm happy that she's here when when these protests were going to happen she can tell you the, the calls we are receiving from parents uh, don't go to the streets. If you want me to lose you, you just go down there on the streets. Can you come home? I've actually cooked for you some nice food. They're, they're actually, <laughs> as, as if we are not, I mean, as, as if we are young. Someone is telling you that you get a bus from Kampala to, to Kunjiri to have some nice supper with them. <laughs> just, just because they know that tomorrow, young people are going to go on the streets. So, I, I, I asked my father that, but I think the reason as to why young people are going on the streets is because there are services that they are not, actually not getting and they feel that these services should be granted by them, by, by, by the government to them. My father replied to me and said, do you think that we don't know that the state should grant us those rights? Why do you think we are silent? So I think um, he gave me a proverb and... and, and, it, and it states that uh, mm -hmm. that uh, I, I'm just going to interpret. Direct interpretation is that uh, someone who says that they are brave, they're actually crying, but those guys that actually feared not to go on the streets are actually not crying, they are happy, they are directing people to, or, on, on, on where they should go and, and, and bury that person. The directions... so. Precisely meaning that for them they still have life and the other people that f thought that they were brave to fight for their rights are actually dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> yes. And, and, and those who are not going to survive. Exactly. Survive. So the whole idea is he told me that sometimes the only peace that you can get is you having a life. Because they, have, they, they realize that the government is not going to change their mindset and right. their narrative. All right. Rhetoric. The leader. What does peace look like? Rhetoric. What does peace look like? Does peace look like the idea that his father prompted to him that for those who are brave will perish and the cowards will live long? What does peace look like, honestly? It's something I'm trying to figure out. Does peace look like staying in captivity and accepting that what is bad, we just eat whatever is bad and we forget that there's actually good that the world has to offer? Not just Personally, this is a very personal conversation. Yeah, yeah. me too. <laughs> it's very personal. <laughs> it's very personal. Um, I went to a UPE school in primary, St. Peter's Primary School here in Zambia. Mm -hmm. UPE. Okay, it's partially like <laughs> 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 Not the kind of UPE we know. But, no, it's, it's UPE because students, from, uh, pupils who, who study in this school are from the barracks and they pay the fees that people in UPE schools pay. And the kind of education we got, um, I think it was okay, because I am who I am because of that as well, yeah? But let us put this into context of people who are in Ajumani, Yube, Rukunjiri, um, people in Karamoja, who are not, <laughs> who, who are getting that basic education, but that basic education actually isn't basic. From that perspective of education, leave that and that. Health. All the health facilities go to northern Uganda, Ulu Referral Hospital, people are sleeping on corridors, mm -hmm. no beds, no medicines. Yeah, but then we front this idea of peace. That's what I ask. What does peace look like? Is peace living in is peace living in captivity and accepting that you need to suffer, but then because because you're so you're so called peaceful, because there's absence of war anyway, um, you're peaceful. So enjoy the suffering and live with it like that. Is that what the second? Now, conclusively ask, the state has the people that win, that lose. You know, I think in the short term they would have us 
I think in the short term there will be winners. There those who will benefit from us not being able to access basic health services, those whose money that, that is being channeled into, you know, whose accounts this money is being channeled into. So there are those people who are, you know, for, at the whim, they are flying out. At the whim, they're throwing the most luxurious of parties. At a whim, they're just distributing money like it's, like it, it's just simply the air we breathe. Those are the people who would have us believe that they would benefit or would have themselves, they're deluded enough to believe that we'll benefit. But make no mistake, if Uganda falls or when Uganda crashes, we all crash with it no matter how much money you have in. We witnessed this in COVID, and I think we all need to reference COVID as a period to realize that no amount of money is going to save you. People, with the, people would go with the highest amount of money they had, bribe their way into a hospital, get an, tr attempt to bribe their way to an oxygen canister, and they couldn't. Those with the highest amount of money could not access an oxygen canister because we failed to construct hospitals to provide even the basic health services. And in that moment, they understood. Of course, they are forgotten because somehow as Ugandans, we have a very short memory. They have taken the initiative right now. I bet people have oxygen canisters at the bottom of their houses right now. They have taken personal initiative instead of focusing on the core issue. I think in the short term, they would have us believe that, or they would have themselves believe that, they are suffering. But when Uganda is suffering, first of all, even going abroad becomes a problem. Your, t your passport is weak. Gaining a visa to go to this country is weak. It is, it, is, it is a trial, not just for yourself, but for your children and your grandchildren. If, if it is for escaping, escaping even becomes a problem. It be, if Uganda is falling apart, the ro same roads you're using, I am using, when you are being, when you are entering a portal, you say you claim you're not feeling it, and you're like huge um, V8. V8. Yeah. You claim you're not, yeah. but we know, <clears throat> we know. We've all sat in V8. You can still feel. Shame, you will shame. still feel. You will still sink. Those portals are getting are, are getting deeper, and uh, the deeper they get, the more the feeling, um, the more we feel it. When the education system is falling apart, it will be. People will ask, "Oh, where did you study? Oh, you studied in Uganda." It becomes harder for you to enter certain universities. It's already getting harder. Much harder. We had that strange scandal where university courses were not accredited. <laughs> you, Uganda is a mad place. Yeah. Someone told me, Denita, be careful. Things happen in Uganda that you would never see anywhere else in the world. I thought he was joking. He was not joking. He was not joking. Uganda is a fever dream. You wake up, you walk in the streets, you read the news, you see what's happening, and you wonder, is this real? Am I going to wake up one day and this is not reality? But it is reality. There is no one who wins in this game, and I think it is imperative that we understand it. History has shown us time and time again that the moment you as a leader decide that your country is not worth it, that your people are disposable, that everything, that every system in your country can crash and fall apart, you will crash with it. Make no... 20, 10 years from now, five years from now, three months from now, you will feel the effect. It doesn't matter. Time is just, time is an illusion. It will all come to pass. It is all going to come to pass. Whether it comes to pass in the scene of war, whether it comes to pass in you ending up in these hospitals you failed to provide services in, whether it comes to pass with you being unable, I think we've witnessed sanctions being placed on those who purport that they are fighting corruption in this country. They claim that the anti-homosexuality bill has, uh, has been the reasoning behind it, and yet those, the countries that have placed sanctions upon them are claiming otherwise. They're, claiming this is, uh, this, they're, they're saying this is based on corruption. This is based on corruption. You feel the effect. You might pretend, you might smile, you might say that, no, I'm a fighter, I do not feel this effect. But you feel the effects because it is not just you involved, it is your family involved, it is your children involved, it is your husband involved. Every single person is involved. There is no winner in this game, but I think people have deluded themselves into believing that there is. And the moment we wake up and we realize that there isn't ever going to be someone that comes on top, then that is when this country can see some level of, some semblance of sanity. But until then, it is, it's going nowhere. We're going nowhere. All right. Denise. This conversation is <laughs> depressing. It's, it's quite emotional. Um, the older generation are arguing that we are copying Kenyans. Britain is in Kenya. Bullshit. Um, that is what they're saying that we're trying to emulate Kenyans. And yet, the actual sense is we are asking for the barest minimum in terms of deliveries of social services. Yeah? 
And that is something that they fail to understand. They have come up with allegations that they are funded. Uh, uh, the people who are pushing this conversation are foreign funded by foreigners who are pushing homosexuality. Like, the backdrop to every defense they have is homosexuality. Forgetting that we have mothers dying every day, children dropping out before even completing primary seven every day, the quality of our education declines every day. And those that even study don't get jobs. Thank you. Dude. And the issue, the only, the only defense they have is homosexuality. <laughs> <laughs> These are people funded by homosexuals. You learn that the, very, that the same people who have a lot of fun. And we need to accept that human beings have this mechanism to easily adapt to situations. Trauma yeah. response. But it's terrible. I just want to use your activism skills, Denise. Because I, mm -hmm. I personally have, I, I wanted to convince people to understand the idea behind this activism. I argued that that slogan, Anita must resign, isn't just for Anita. But yeah. It isn't, isn't hate against the person in the speaker. It's just the picture of She's a, because she had the, the institution of parliament. She has a depiction of a failed parliamentary system that you stepping down and giving someone the mantle would possibly you know, take us forward. Parliament is not the only corrupt institution. There are others. But why are we focusing on parliament now? It's a face for this country. So using your skills, please. I'm not going to uh, use fancy words. Using your skills, quantify the message for young, young Gen Z's in this country fighting against corruption. Yeah, Jack, the first thing is that this government is very shameless. What <laughs> two trillion of your budget is funded by foreigners? I now know. it's being funded by foreigners and you're saying, uh, probably Gen Z's are being funded by fo Which foreigners? You crushed the CSOs. You chased out almost all the NGOs that existed and the civil society is crushed in Uganda. Mm. And you're saying young people are funded by foreigners. Who are these foreigners we don't see? If they are and, not and where's the money? Exactly. Where's the money? <laughs> where's the, where's the money? We don't feel it. Like, because I think if we felt that we had this money, we'd probably be driving V8s on hot poles yeah. and not fill them. And I think it's very delusional for the president or his front homosexuality. I think that's a weak card. Every time you can't come because I'm fighting homosexuality. Why has it Pastor Semper been, uh, been curtailed or why has it Pastor Semper had everyone auditing him and saying he's against homosexuality? Because mm -hmm. I think now they're using it as a tool to continuously curtail Ugandans to find a reason for their failures. Because now if you can't justify your failures and now you're demonizing people who are trying to bring them out and canonizing um, probably the corrupt officials and thieves, it becomes very problematic. Because even the question you ask, um, Gen Z's of Kenya versus Gen Z's of Uganda. These are two different contexts. There are two different contexts. And challenges. To an extent that this is the corruption you feel. Let's even not even go far in hospitals <coughs> or anywhere. To get to an office, you must leave an envelope there to be considered. For example, if I say I want my concept to be heard, probably I'm going to ask, oh, so you're not shaking my hands. And these are things that happen daily. On the roads, the traffic officers, you see, um, you find um, taxi drivers and all that, they stop you, why don't you have a permit? And guess what, they tell you, oh, uh, have you read a newspaper today? They hand you a newspaper with a what? With money. And this is corruption that is taking place even before we go to the bigger picture, the reflection of the country. We talked about UPE schools. When you know the reality that someone is studying computer, they have never seen what a mouse looks like. When they are teaching them, they give them a stone and they tell them, this side is the right click, this side is the left click. And they're using a stone as a metric to study computers which are going to be asked to do. And in the 21st century where you're saying, oh, you have a task force of uh, people. They have, <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. all right. they have PhDs. We get it, they have PhDs. But this is a revolution for young people in a government where you're saying, in a country, oh, you're fronting statistics. Oh, we are the youngest. We probably must be the youngest uh, population in the world. And you're saying, we don't even have the basic needs to access AI. You form task forces for artificial intelligence and the people you're fronting. PhDs, yet they're very young people who are talented. Who have done courses. Who have done courses, who have done technovations, and you're saying, no, someone has a PhD or anything. I think this country, Mr. President should know, that we are not blind. It's not that we are not facing these things ourselves. 
when you go out there on the street and you struggle to look for a job, because your parent probably doesn't have connection, the only connection they have is in the farm wealth creation. That wealth creation, you can't even move your products from one district to another because the roads are terrible. You can't even, business in Uganda, people would be rich. But how do I have a bus, uh, the, the system, the road, uh, the transport system? The bus that leaves uh, Kampala to cover reaches the next day. <laughs> you don't even have like basic transportation to say that you're going to have mobile. To Karamoja, you take 16 hours in uh, Gateway. Gateway leaves at 1 a.m., you reach the next day 6 p.m. Denise, <laughs> speaking of transportation, I'm going to use a personal experience. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I should be the person to share a personal experience in no, 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 no. transport. Personal experience. I'm a person. Can, <laughs> can you imagine? That a domestic flight costs 130 Ugandan shillings. Wait, to where? Imagine. No, no, not in Uganda. The subcontract I was in, from one city A to city B, I paid UGX 130,000 Ugandan shillings. And the flight cost was 130k. Wow. Francis is. It's a bus. Not a bus. No, no, no. Wait, 130,000 Ugandan Yes, in Ugandan shillings, 130k. Like, 130k Ugandan shillings. And these are systems at work. And, like, taking a flight in Uganda is a luxury. In some countries, it's a normal transport system. Now, let me tell you, there are buses you bought. It dies on the road, they get a backup, it's dead. They don't have someone to make that dial up wait in the morning. I, I think <clears throat> you look at this transport system, and Mr. President says, Oh, young people are being funded by foreigners to do what? To buy cars or to use these buses that don't even move or anything. When you look at every metric of development, and you see NRM, the original NRA, whatever you want to call it, have fronted this narrative that, oh, we have peace, be comfortable. I think, like what you said, development should be beyond the presence of peace. And what we call peace in Uganda is not peace, it's silence. Because mm -hmm. when you rise up, then that's when you know that there is no peace in Uganda. Because everything we are fronting, it's because of silence. Uh, it should be beyond the absence of war. If I go to a health center, can I be able to access Panadol? If I go, if it, even the bare minimum, if I go to a UPE school, UPE schools right now, people are in news over corruption, corruption of these funds, people don't have buildings, and you're saying, oh no, people should not do what, should not rise up because they are copying. Fun, yeah, fun fact. Fun fact. No, I said, <laughs> fun fact. I saw a video on Twitter. Kids marching. You know how those days we used to march singing yeah, songs? Yeah, they are singing with Zambi. They are singing with Zambi. Now let me tell you. Next generation of Ugandans. And, and that's the generation we want to be confronted with. Because we don't have the same kind of leadership. Because we don't have the same kind of leadership. And that's the generation we want to be concerned about all these things. I think we should understand that when systems fall, when I was coming uh, today, he had told me that when systems fall, we must be bad people because we fall with it. I told him, no, there should be people who stand up for the right thing all the time. Because just because systems are falling, and as a young person, I am probably corrupt because not I'm comfortable because I'm benefiting from corruption. Yeah, Maybe I can be able to access all these things. I can be able to do this and that. Yeah. But that's like only 1% of the Ugandans out there. I told you, do you know what people sell? Do you know what people do in downtown? They are selling money for money. You come, they have 10 to 2,000. They get 2,000 from that money. Mm -hmm. And that's an economic activity in Uganda. Or they are probably selling up key holders on the road. The entire day, your job is to sell key holders and those jumping dolls. And, and you've started. And surprisingly, uh, KCCA. And they are being funded by no, foreigners. KCCA will come and, 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 and that's them. them. And then take your, and, and and your supplies, yes, take all your stock. They will justify the demonstration not to take place because you step on people's Messy. tomatoes who they chase out. <laughs> not, <laughs> not the right. Let me just bring it here. <laughs> yeah. Yes, please. Voice your, just, 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 just voice away. Like, like whatever you feel, just say it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just can't express myself right now because this is more personal but uh on, on 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 twitter we have this 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 trend that that is where the president wants us <laughs> when, when he talked about children singing hozambi that is where the president wants you that he doesn't want you to talk about important issues that are actually affecting you but he just wants you to to to, to concentrate on hozambi go 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 in, in parties drink uh, die. Yeah, it just doesn't want you to start questioning them. You see, when you talk about homosexuality, when they say that we're actually being funded by homosexuals, this month we actually saw universities from abroad. Most of them were actually uh, holding their graduation ceremonies. 
90% of the leaders that we have here had their children studying from yeah. those universities and they could actually fry out and, and, and you know, celebrate with them, including the first daughter. So what does that mean? It actually means that for them they say, they tell us that if you, you're, you're in contact with whites, they're actually going to teach you bad traits of homosexuality. But for them, they take their children out to actually contact these homosexuals. <laughs> and, and, and <laughs> I don't know if that, uh, that makes sense, does and it? To learn from them. And, and, and to learn to homosexuality from to them. Yeah? To be educated from the people that we shouldn't that contact. Yeah, yeah, to be educated by the people that we shouldn't contact because if we contact them, they're actually going to teach us homosexuality. But for them, they want to learn from them. So that initially, that, that precisely means that it is no longer like it is no longer funny but it is just these guys are just like i don't know the right word to use someone just saying that for you you can't reason as a human being so what we have to do is is, is let's just tell you that you shouldn't do this you shouldn't do that so i think m me as a person i feel that as youth as young people we need to tell the government that we're actually seeing what they are doing so that we are fools i i, I told you uh, when my father to called me I, I told him that it's not that we are still young, that we can't see what is happening in this country. The fact that we are not speaking doesn't necessarily mean that we are actually not being affected. It means that we are tired and everyone wants to go on the streets. So if you say that we shouldn't, you know, go to these uh, whites or what, the, the whole idea is the other day I was, I was going to Rwanda and... and and I was actually with everybody. We used a bus called Abapakas. <laughs> and and <laughs> Abapakas in English simply means workers. <laughs> we, we boarded the bus at 7 p.m. When he talked about transport, I said that I should be having the personal experience. 7 p.m. we are like half full. So we reached, we started moving at around 11 p.m. We boarded at 7, started moving at around 11. When we had reached Masaka, so, uh, the driver received a call. Someone had called him and was like, oh, you guys left me in Kampara. <laughs> so we thought that the driver is going to say that we have left. He parked there <laughs> and said, we have to wait for our friend. He's also going in Rwanda. We waited for like two hours for that friend to, 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 to actually reach there. So to cut the story short, we reached in Rwanda the next day at 11 p.m. Yeah, yeah, I think we, we spent 20 p.m. Yeah. Um... Oh, God. We reached in Barra. <laughs> we, reached, we reached in Barra at 7 a.m. Oh. From, from Kampala to Barra, it's three hours. But we boarded at 7 p.m. and reached in Barra at 7 a.m. Oh. So, sure. but, but, but it's not that people were complaining. It's that, uh, what, what, what made me feel bad as a person is not that these people were, we were, weren't actually complaining. They, they just kept quiet. Which simply means that they have adapted to the situation. Yeah. They know that this is the way to go. They have to suffer for them to actually g survive. Exactly. And 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 I sort of <laughs> and 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 Rick, you see what is very bad is that yeah, we have this yeah. like we have like one seat for one person, but we're actually seated there like three. Yeah. And, and, and we are comfortable, we are seated like this. <laughs> very, very comfortable. And, and, and you just move when they tell and, you. And, and when you tell the driver that, uh, I, I, I don't want to sit with someone, he's just going to tell you, you wait for a taxi that is actually going to give you uh, one seat. Sarcastically, that means that you're actually not going to get to that taxi. So what that simply means, and this is what I was telling everybody when we were coming, that systems have failed us, and the only way for survival for these people is not because they are bad. It's not because someone keeping quiet is a bad person. Mm -hmm. The only survival they have is for them to now also be bad, for them to adapt. Ask yourself, we had people like Andrew Mwenda. You, 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 you saw Andrew Mwenda before, before 2016, 2009. These people were actually talking about yes. what affected young people, what affected the country. But see them right now, dining with these kings that we're actually cr criticizing. The issue is not that the knowledge they had then, they no longer have it. The issue is they have realized that even though they speak, 
nothing is going to change. Right. So the only option they have now is to also benefit the little they can get from 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 the government because they know the the, the cards they can play. Just say, oh, our man, our man, and, and and the person is going to say, okay, you're now reasonable. Let me give you a ministry. I remember was telling me as I conclude. I remember was telling me when we were coming. There is a former minister. He doesn't even have a car. So I remember they went there yesterday to, to, to brainstorm about something. They were doing some concept note. And when, when she reached there, she was like, oh, you don't have a car. That was, that was her first question. Okay, right. and, and, and she couldn't understand how a former minister cannot have a car. For her, it was a surprise. And, and the, the, the answer that this minister told her is that for her, she criticized the ruling government. And her punishment is... Uh, she doesn't have to receive anything from them. So she's now a mwana inchi. She's just as someone who never had anything in the first place. But the worst part is that she's among the people that actually drafted the constitution. Surprising. <coughs> yes. Adric, can I just add something to this? You've asked sure. Denise and everything to speak out and get the Gen Z <clears throat> to understand why they should care about these things. My thing is just, you guys, be angry. Be angry. At the very minimum, every single one of us should be angry about where we have. It is no accident we see statistics of the mental health issues in this country. This country depresses you by simply existing in it. It is, True. the air feels like it's crashing down on you because you're in Uganda and you're Ugandan and you can't leave. In fact, we are strong people. We are <laughs> strong people. We are, if I, we are carrying the weight of the, of the world on our shoulders simply because we have the tragedy, the misfortune of being born in Uganda. This last week, people have, excused, have accused me of being overly emotional in my my um, discourse regarding this they have told me oh Denita, calm yourself you must not be reactionary be reactionary because the things that are happening to you deserve a level of reaction that is that that is radical that is radical how i wish um a couple of ugandans just you and go to, to countries like kenya just go to kenya and see what a system looks like. Even if, even with the issues they have, just <laughs> go to Kenya. Just cross over to Kenya. Maybe, maybe Kenya, just, guys... just one <laughs> statement. I I I I was just with someone about Kenyans when the president ordered uh, uh, the soldiers to go on the streets and you know uh, start beating the people, and 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 the head of the task force said, no, that is not constitutional. Exactly. I, I I told my friends even that if 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 it was in Uganda. And the president gives you a direct call to go and kill. <laughs> that is a privilege. From <laughs> that is a privilege that oh, the president is actually telling me to go and kill people. And that is, you, you, are, you, you have seen how those people that actually killed those of Kasesa are now yeah. the people that have been promoted. They're the people that are re receiving three salaries. We have we have MPs from Karamoja, but he has again been given an office in Karamoja, yet is an MP in government. He, and also is a minister, but also he has asked, uh, been given another job in Karamoja to oversee MPs in Karamoja, yet we also have a minister of Karamoja. That is the privilege that you get in Uganda when you receive a call from the president that go and do this, even though it is wrong. Uganda is a mess. <coughs> they have, one thing that bothers me the most, I say this week people have accused me of being emotional and reactive, which I think should be the norm, mm. but we are, we are emotional. We have been like you said, people have been disillusioned into believing this is a culture of peace and everything like that. But beyond that, um, there's a certain level of hopelessness. I was having a conversation with a young man. He finished LDC. He's sitting at home. He's, guys, for three years, he has been sitting at home. Do you know how painful that is? This is someone who did well in school. They struggled to get into Macquarie University. The Macquarie University, that was the Harvard of Africa. That, that was the university that gave us some of the greatest minds in the country. It is now in, sh in like tatters because we have let the government do that university. He struggled to get into it. The university his parents were never able to get into. His grandparents were never able to get into. And now he is sitting at home. People for three years. And a lawyer. <laughs> All right, let's just. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> let's, 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 you know, growing up, um, every university was referred to as Makere. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah. That when, remember when we were like, uh, I think in top class, when we wear that gown, they'd be like, you should study and go to Makere. Okay, yeah. <laughs> like, 
That was a no. You are going to make it. No, no, no. I mean, um, in, 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 in medicine <laughs> school. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> in medicine <laughs> school, but in his wedding. Anyway, let's just go for a short break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Digital rights are those human rights and legal rights that allow individuals to access, use, create and publish digital media or to access and use computers, other electronic devices and telecommunication networks. Digital rights include a right to freedom of expression, information and communication through technology, a right to privacy and data protection, a right to credit for personal works, a right to universal and equal digital access, a right to identity, a right to anonymity a right to be forgotten, and a right for protection of minors, among others. The state's digital rights are frequently violated through various unfair actions, for example, blockage of websites and social networks, theft of credentials, unauthorized use of people's data for personal gain, privacy intrusion, online censorship, arrests and intimidation of online users, internet blockages, and a proliferation of laws and regulations that undermine the potential of technology to drive social, economic, and political development worldwide. It is hence every citizen's responsibility to respect rights of other digital users and to speak out or report to the responsible parties when one's rights are violated. Come back from that break. Just before we went into the break, we were discussing the state versus the people, the willingness <coughs> of the users. And the conversation was quite emotional, I must say. Now, Denise, Ian and Danita gave us a very interesting but heartfelt perspective to the conversation. But right now I want to touch the issue of social media activism. And I'll begin with the needs and then cut across with all the panelists. Um, social media has played a very key role in advancing not only the fight against corruption, but also in exposing various institutions <coughs> from big companies that we know to even uh, backing the fight against <coughs> corruption. Kenya, for example, they blew the, the blue X, formerly Twitter, with the, I think, the biggest Twitter space they ever held. Mm. They even went ahead and uh, rallied the president to attend one of the Twitter spaces to answer those questions. Oh. That's how powerful social media activism is. Denise, uh, you use your, uh, your, your Twitter accounts and right now you're on TikTok, um, uh, your Instagram to push issues relating to climate change. How can we then leverage? Um, um, your platform, particularly, yes, your, your, your platforms to advance issues, social issues like corruption using the media. Um, all right, thank you so much, Jay. Even before we go into uh, social media activism, the problem in Uganda is that you have people not accessing electricity. You have 12.5% who cannot be able to afford data. You have uh, people who are based in rural communities that don't even have access to a smartphone, yeah? The bare minimum in the 21st century to have communication. And um, even when we do social media activism, I think in Kenya, it has been revolutionized where everyone is probably active on their TikTok, social media. As compared to Uganda and Kenya, we'll just make a comparison. In Uganda, we are probably having trends of all Zambe, yeah? And in Kenya, they're having a trend about probably speaking to power, comrades power, power, comrades this, this. And that's the real difference that happens in Uganda and Kenya. But social media activism is a very powerful tool, and that's what I'm going to talk about. You see, most of this awareness even marched to parliament, even exposed the corrupt. I think you saw how much it worked for the road port hall exhibitions, and they were able to fill up most of the roads at the time, yeah? So these platforms, I used to create awareness. The first thing is that you cannot fight for what um, you don't know. If you're able to know that there is corruption happening, how it is happening, where it is happening, you're empowered with the information to actually do something, to take an action. Mm. As compared to probably when you don't have any information, you're just there scrolling your TikTok, seeing what's on scrolling your Twitter, and all these things. So as Ugandans who have large following, we need to interest ourselves with things that affect us as young people. Because if I go on a famous TikTok page, I want to see what I need to understand, what is happening in the country, what can I fight for, as compared to probably having trends. Musicians, and these are people who are largely quiet, I think you've seen how they're called out. Most of the musicians, they have a large following uh, on social media, TikTok. They're influencers, <coughs> but they only want gigs. Um, 
and probably Ministry of Agriculture is hosting something. I don't even know if Ministry of Agriculture is hosting anything. <laughs> you, you go on, you have a, okay, like all these things, certainly they want to influence for me. <laughs> but when things affect <coughs> us, there is nothing that you want to post about, you don't want to tweet about anything. There are some people who have drank, you post a status and 700 people are already viewing it. Like, use your, use your WhatsApp, every social media activism that we can create mm -hmm. to make sure that that information reaches everyone. But again, now this is the biggest problem. Beyond social media activism, most of the voters are not online. Even right now we are crying corruption, we are going on the streets. When it comes to 2026, you will still vote that corrupt leader. Why? Because <coughs> it has not reached the ground. Yeah. So we need to ensure that beyond social media activism, we actually have a way of empowering. It doesn't necessarily need to be a rally or a campaign. We have these small conversations. We have a... Uh, um, is it the domestic hostel? You have those conversations you have all the time with your peers and all that. That's how you create awareness. That's how you make people politically aware. Because even as we struggle to make Denise, ourselves let me just relevant, briefly interject there. Yeah. Uh, there is still a divide with the so-called elite youth. There are those who are barely concerned with what's going on, and there are those that are concerned. There are those who argue that this this move of a uh, fight against corruption will not achieve any cause because you know what? Many Ugandans are not involved. It's only a few who are fighting. So why should even be bothered? They are interested mm -hmm. in posting maybe on Snapchat, on TikTok, and they are fairly comfortable because they think they're you know, getting the barest of minimums to them, forgetting the reality. Now, that's what I was talking about. There are those comfortable young people that are benefiting from the system that don't want to fight the system. And I think that is what is pulling us down as young people. Because those are individuals that access boardrooms. You know you cannot fight a system from outside the system. Those kind of elite youth that are able, Drake, you're able to attend a conference, Jewish, Africana the next day, or where, those are the young people that have the platform to speak out for the majority. But when they reach there, you know what they say? Oh, we commend Mr. President, we commend the government, we commend what? You're appreciating what? Corruption? Thieves? And you find that these are discussions that the people that represent us are, oh my god, I was so disappointed even in most of the youth representatives. Mm -hmm. For example, you just come and you ought to retweet and say, if it was a patriotic cause, I would have joined. What more patriotism do you need to fight corruption when people, in West Nile, people don't have electricity. They have been crying this for the past 30 years. Like, and then you come and say, if it was a patriotic cause, I could have joined. And these are people you expect to represent the majority of the young people in prison, who are struggling with education, struggling with jobs. You don't even have the bare minimum to compete on a global level technology. Like, you can't do anything as a young person. So beyond social media activism, I think we need to have, also as young people, to have people who represent us like, uh, efficiently as compared to what we only do on social media. So beyond that, then what happens next? Okay. Yeah, beyond that, what happens next? I think. In my opinion, I would look at, first of all, leveraging on social media. We have very many young people who post many things that make them happy. Um, yeah. Trends that don't really add value to the cause of this nation, which of course they have every right to. Everyone has their rights to, you know, their digital rights, which they are free to do whatever they want. But considering that we're in this situation, the status quo, whereby the roads are terrible, electricity in, in the northern parts of Uganda is, 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 it is it's a luxury. It comes, they'll tell you, we shall have electricity from today, from mm. 7, uh, from 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. So the yeah. next day, tell, tell you, and <laughs> it's a normal situation, and people are accustomed to that, and yet Kenya, that buys electricity from us, and even at <laughs> cheaper price, have their power zone. And this is a country that produces its own electricity. Yeah? Mm. Look at the education. Like basic, basic, basic things. How can we get young people all in, like all joining this cause, to push for what is rightfully theirs? That social contract that we argue. I think in the first place, young people need to um, adapt to, to to what is going on. You see, most of the young people today. I, I and I, I just want to first give you uh, a, a story. Back then in high school, you'd be having like your friend, and he tells you that, bro, we shouldn't read, yeah? Uh, let's just go and sleep. <laughs> At around 3 a.m., they wake up <laughs> and, and, go, and go and read. And this is what is happening currently. 
I, I, I was watching a video on TikTok. Uh, there is a guy called Opio. So he went on his status and he was like, we have to match today. They, 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 we have to kill these guys. We have to show them that we want our rights. Then he later slept. So the, the, the whole idea is that even when we are on social media and we are advocating for our rights there, it is not enough. It is not enough for you to just post on your status and say that we, we want this. I think what is enough is for you to now go deep down there and mobilize the, the, the people that don't know that these rights actually need to be given to them. Another example that I can give you is that, uh, as, as Denise said, most of us, when you get an opportunity to talk about the government or to actually advocate for the rights the government is not giving you, you end up actually commending the government for the good it has done. Just because you also, as, as I said, systems have failed. So even if you question this government and say that this is wrong, you know that you're not going to get your chigati the way you people term it. So what you do is now to actually um, dance to their tunes for them to actually give you that sort of job, for them to actually give you that sort of uh, uh, money. So I think the problem with youth, that uh, the problem that we currently have is that uh, people are actually surviving. The other day, you saw when young lawyers were, were on Twitter actually saying that they want this, they cannot actually on, only depend on just going for internship and you give them a cup of tea, no, no, not even lunch. And one senior lawyer came up and said that, but what does it take for you to actually be patient for two years, <laughs> yet you have been suffering for your entire <laughs> life? You need to be patient for more two years of suffering and after suffering for those two years, you can actually also start earning a salary. So what does that mean? It, it, it simply means that they are saying that accept the suffering, adapt to the system, so that when you also get a job, you, have, you also make other people to suffer. So most of the people are actually surviving. The other day you saw musicians. Everybody tells you that most of the musicians are not calling out the government. Do you know why? Because most of the gigs they get, they are from yeah. these government officials. Today he wants to sing on uh, uh, the right Thomas Taewa's event. There is no way he's going to say that the parliament is corrupt because Taewa is not going to give him a gig. Even if he gave him a gig, the people are going to say, but if you're saying that he's corrupt, why are you receiving corrupt money? So the option then is to keep silent. So you find that we are curtailed in, in like a circle whereby the people to actually make you better are the people that are in these positions and are the people that are corrupt. So what I think that what I want to tell the young people out there is that they also need to look at the leaders that we actually have. These leaders that we think are important right now, most of them in their full ages, they were in opposition. Talk about uh, Thomas Taewa, talk about even the speaker, talk about almost everyone that is in the government right now that has those topmost positions, Nobat Mao, those guys were in opposition. And, and, and what am I saying? The government can only see that you have value if you are able to critique and criticize and show it what it is not doing right. You coming out and telling the government that what they are doing is wrong does not necessarily mean that they are going to kill you as mo most people out there think. So I think then the youth should understand that we need to come up correctively, fight for our rights, and because we are the highest percentage in the government, we are the highest percentage in the country. So that precisely means that if we are like one million people on those streets, even the soldiers could not actually fight us. Why? Because they don't have the manpower. Even the cells could not accommodate us. Because there are, there are few, there are few cells and even the size of the cells cannot accommodate more than 100 people. So I think the problem is that we haven't mobilized ourselves to know that we hold the power. We haven't mobilized ourselves to know that we can change the government. And we also haven't mobilized ourselves to know what we want to fight for. Today, Drake, I can... We have seen most of the youth leaders that we have. Today they are on Twitter saying that, you know what, we have to fight for this, we have to fight for that. The next day you see, you see them with Kano's uh, dining with them. Then the following day is like, oh, Kano is a good person. The other day he, he, launched, he launched this and that. And the other day you were saying that this is a bad person that ate government's money. So what message are you sending? So I rather think that it is not just up to us to tweet 
but our actions always speak louder than our words. Because today, Drake, I'm going to say this. Tomorrow, if you find me in a yellow tie dining with kings and I see you, I'm like, eh, man, you see, that was a gig. So, so if, 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 if we can all come up together and know that we can be a solution to this government, and if we also understand that we are the future of this, of, of this country, then I think our actions should be better than the words that we actually say. I think maybe for, also for purposes of discourse mm -hmm. and guidance, um, this move is nonpartisan. Whether yeah. you're yellow, you're green, you're red, we're all affected by corruption anyway. Yeah. And what many, what many young people, I think I'm going to speak directly to the cadres um, within the various parties, it's, it's not a move that is partisan. Um, corruption affects all of us. Irrespective of whether you're no parent or um, a DP, and, a UPC. and that's what people don't understand. That's something they should understand. But also the youth leaders that, right? First of all, like who? There are youth leaders who 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 youth leaders who met with uh, uh with Colonel <laughs> Kano Nakalem and uh, represent the position of the youth. What position yeah. of the youth? And, 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 and maybe, Drake, let me also say this. The other day you saw the National Youth Council come out with a statement commending the police. And it was until most of the cabinet members on, 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 on the National Youth the Council, council table, the council members, themselves? They, asso they associated themselves from the statement. What does that mean? It means that even the representatives we have don't even consult their members to come up with a, with a corrective decision. Mm. It means that right now they are taking power in their hands. And that is what the government wants us to do. It wants you to, uh, to, to, to do just one decision as a person, not asking other members because they want to bribe that lead person, okay? Like yeah, be, and, 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 and it's because of the gig. And it was until the, the, the council members called the called him out that he had to change the statement so it entirely means that the problem we have as youth right now is that even if you get that particular office you don't want to work with the members that have been elected to you just want to say that i am the head i'm the chairperson therefore what i decide is what is what goes, what goes. and and if if you say that now the youth are failing themselves what do you want the elder people to do for us They'll be like, but you have youth leaders, what have they done? The other day you saw what Nyamutoro tweeted. She said that uh, if it was a patriotic movement, she would join. But what patriotic movement do you want if someone is saying that the dress of the speaker could help her mother to actually access, um, access ICU, ICU and, and, and still be alive right now? What other patriotic movement would you want if I, call, if I call out the leaders and I'm like, the fact that we cannot even go to school, the fact that we cannot access health services, the fact that if I'm on a judge, I, the roads, the potholes, everything, and I'm calling you out to look at the policies that you're actually passing in parliament, and I'm saying that the, the policies that you're passing are not fair enough for that local person down there. And you're saying that, oh, you're not patriotic and and and, and for yeah. them lastly as i conclude and for them they think because if you analyze that statement very well they're like she was like the youth are not patriotic and that's why the police didn't join them <laughs> and, wow. and and and, and she and she says that if the police had joined the movement maybe it could show the world that this is a patriotic movement let's analyze the police this is the police that violates human rights. That if today, Drake, you come out and, and talk about the issues that are affecting you... In Simple the, example. It, the the <laughs> girl who, who it, held a just a placard. Disturbing the assembly. assemblies. Thank you. And, and constitutionally, you have the right to demonstrate. The right to say and that this is affecting you. This is the police that is going to come and take you where we don't know because they cannot even... You can't ask them today and be like, why is this girl? Because we also don't know where the girl is. And someone says that if that police had joined the movement, for heaven's sake, all oh, that movement would be patriotic. The other day you saw the police, uh, people were choosing the police of sodomizing people. And they are saying that 
those people that were arrested, some of them came out and said that they were sodomized by people they don't know in the police cells. And someone says that this is the police that would have joined these people to know that they are patriotic. This is the same police, traffic police, you know. Today, if you don't have a driving permit, you're just going to tip that guy 1K and you're going to continue. This is the patriotic police that a youth leader is saying that if it had joined the movement, he would think that, oh, these guys are having a patriotic movement and a patriotic revolution and they have patriotic ideas. Which ideas are those? That for you as a person who is saying that I have a problem, you can't have a problem if a police that violates your rights doesn't join you. Delicate. Very sarcastic. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm aware you saw that cartoon uh, spire of elders those days. Stealing is bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you see the, the grandpa yeah. is telling the kids stealing is bad. And now? Now, shielding. Shielding the thieves. They are the thieves. Yeah. That's not means our words. They're shielding them. And uh, the president in his tweet says he has been in the forefront of the fight against corruption. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And the other day he said that uh, if you steal and build, uh, build, build schools, at least you're bringing back the, the, the money to the people, so it is okay. I just imagine, <laughs> I just imagine if the Museveni of 1986, 1986 uh, the current Museveni went back in time and met with them, the Museveni, I think they would fight. I know. No, no, no. I think it was the same person. <laughs> I think Ugandans, we have issues with picking the men who will let lead us. We are just, we are that woman that has issues with picking the right man. Museveni is and always has been. I think this guy, we just never saw it as a country. We were just willing and, you know, we, we are actually, were actually, he had ideologies. I actually think he was. He actually, he started, he actually did no, no, no. have ideologies. No, no, Because if I you see the first 10 years, the man was. was I, think, really I think he started off, I mean, people like, don't change, people don't entirely after switch up as individuals. So it was the turn of the century that <laughs> that, that, that <laughs> came, eh? the 1990s. Because, you see, I was having a conversation with a certain professor and he told me Museveni depicted the kind of leaders they expected for yeah. Africa. Mm. And for Kenya, they said Museveni is that leader that um, Moe Kibaki wasn't. Yeah? No, I do not doubt so, that. So, so, so he, Museveni was a depiction of the new revolution of African leaders. Mm. And now let's imagine, is he really... He's not my grandfather. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I was going to say that's patronizing, that by the way. That's extremely yeah. patronizing. I'm going to start with a sermon. He is not my grandfather. Let us just, he is not any of our grandfathers. His grandchildren are sat somewhere on the other side of the world with better services where they can get an accident and access an actual hospital with actual standards. They can access an education that will take them somewhere. They can access a job, a minimal job, even just like a basic, but beyond a job they can access a threshold of a salary that will take them somewhere outside their home. We're not his grandchildren. He has made that abundantly clear. And yet, in a way to minimize us, in a way to trivialize us, in a way to trivialize our struggles, he constantly calls us his bazookul. His <laughs> bazookul. <laughs> Let's just analyze a statement from that point. Grandparents, growing up, my grandfather, God may, may so rest in peace, we just married him this year. Sorry. When... My grandfather is this kind of person, when he received his pension, he would come home, he would buy fish. Mm -hmm. Like, my grandchildren, come we eat. Like, in, in a chili, those small fish are called... Nana. No, not nana. It's called lutien kwan, like school going children. Yeah. The small fish. And he loved fish so much. He was a teacher. Um, he called us to eat with him. Yeah? That is a depiction of a grand Grandmothers, when they had money, or when you can't visit your grandma. She would call you and pick them give and Exactly. Are we really his bazukulu? Only his grandchildren. His grandchildren. No mistake. His grandchildren are receiving. No, the, if he calls us that, the then we definitely expect to live in a better country. We really do. Um, Drake. Drake. This gentleman, and this is why I'm saying we must be angry. This gentleman has trivialized not just our, our struggles or anything like our basic humanity has been trivialized before his eyes. Do you know what it means for you as a girl to not be able to access a pad? I know. Like, a pad, you people. <laughs> 
you have to use sand because that is the MB that is the environment he has created. And then he tells you you are being foreign funded to feel anger at this situation. Just that statement. We have free condoms, but we can't have free pads. You guys. <laughs> Enjoy and suffer. <laughs> a basic ideological, a, a basic biological function in this country of ours has been put as a punishment. It is torture for some people. You fear that time of month coming. You wish that it is not coming. You people, there, there, there are situations where girls get pregnant in refugee camp to avoid having to go through their period. Now you're I, choosing I, a deathbed. I, I had that story. Uh, when I was in Nvepi, very many ladies, uh, very many young girls, opt to get pregnant because they do not have money to buy pads. And then someone tells you you must be foreign funded to feel anger. You must receive foreign funding to receive. Anger. And then he says he's our grandparent. You know this oh, this um, omnipotent individual who has his gracious hand o o across the rest. Of, he's not our grandfather. And I think this this last week has taught me that people are. It's not even the elite. Citizens, young people like you and I would text me after I post on my status or I post on you and they would text me, Delita, what's happening? What do you mean what's happening? First of all, let me also be critical of the young people. What do you mean what's happening? I, it is upon you as a citizen to make yourself aware of what is happening in your country. If you have the privilege to have a phone, if you have the privilege to have data, it is upon you as a citizen to know what is happening in your country, especially on of matters of such pertinence. There is no room nowadays for what is happening. With all the information. With all the information, <laughs> there is no room right now for what is happening. That is a very, that is a very color statement. I, I do not expect it from young people. I'm going to be very honest. And then let me go to the, to the, um, to the youth leaders. I have been completely, completely disappointed by National Youth Council. I'm not going to mince my words. I'm going to say who they exactly they are. The youth representatives from the north, uh, from the, from the, from the north, the east, the west, the central region. Every single one of them silent. One of them. Oh, we've all been referencing her, Honorable Nyamutoro, because she has been the order of the day. We have been praising her. Make, 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 us, make yourself worthy of the praise people have given you. But you wait for the president to post such. You can also say, by the way, you guys, you also you, foreign funding, foreign funding. You waited for him to post the whole day. You are sitting on your phone. Hey, has he, has he, has he, has he put something out? And then once he puts something out, that's when you also discover your voice, a voice to just reiterate what he is saying. You have become... There is, I question what your necessity is in this country. Why are you coming to us to ask for votes? Sit down, sit at your home, and, and wallow in your uselessness, because that is what you have perpetuated yourself to be. That is what you have exhibited yourself to be. There are certain organizations and groups of people that have put in together institutions for young people to take up leadership positions. To take up leadership positions. And in those leadership positions, there is just a shiny leadership position with no reach. They do not allow them to have reach. If you speak out, they tell you you must speak out, but you, we must approve what you're saying. What do you mean you must approve what I'm saying? But what, the, what is the message I'm putting out? Stop corruption. Anita must resign. But that in this country, that is seen as a terrorist attack. That is seen as a terrorist attack. To say stop corruption in this country has been seen as a terrorist attack. We have organization. The United States Council has been an absolute disappointment. An absolute disappointment. Amidst what is happening in the country, initially they started with their statement. Now their leader has started making it seem like he's also being personally attacked. People are in jail. A hundred, over a hundred people are in jail. And you have still managed to narcissistically make it about yourself. And you then go ahead and argue that young people will not join you when they cut down the budget. Do, <laughs> do, do you know everything that has come out in this last week, actually in the, before that, but in this last week in particular, has been disappointing. We have, it has been clearly established that we have no youth organization in this country, no youth structure in this country, no political youth structure in this country that is for the people or is for the youth. I do not know where it is going to come from. I do not know who is where it is going to come from, but it needs to come from somewhere. Take up the position. <laughs> guys, what for me? <laughs> you can't even get to that chance because the politics, the politics that... Yeah, yeah, they commercialize the politics. You don't have the money. Forget <laughs> it being commercialized. commercialized. It is a disgusting situation. You enter a place. Oh, we have, we have issue, we've had issues of people being sexually um, exploited in these structures. You enter a place, even just interacting with the people on ground, the, the, your ideologies are crushed. I was recently speaking to someone who is in one of the largest opposition parties in Uganda and he joined, he was a hopeful young person, a hopeful youth, and he joined this party and right now he says 
you people, I can understand where the mental illnesses in this country come from. He seems depressed, depressed at what he has found in there. They say, Danita, you must, you, you have to be able to make room for, for um, waivers in certain principles in these dynamics. Like, let's say your principle of anti-corruption, your principle of honesty, it should, be able, it should be flexible in such dynamics. But then he said, you know what, Danita, I would be okay with it if they were doing something, but nothing is being done. Every structure in this country has been dilapidated from the opposition to the healthcare to the parliament. There is nothing functional in this country. Do you know what that says about us as a people? There is absolutely nowhere we can turn to in this country, except maybe inward, but even inward has been destroyed by what is out. Wow. Wow. It has almost come to an end, but <coughs> I still feel hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. too. Um, I'm sure. I can give you another reason to get annoyed. <laughs> like, I don't know what happens to, um, to Uganda, where we no longer know the good and bad side. We are just players. Mm. All the ministers <coughs> that were corrupt, uh, the MPs that were corrupt probably years ago, have been shifted to other ministries. You see, <laughs> Jim was, he was a minister of uh, internal affairs. Um, when he was in the Global Fund scandal, they shifted him to another ministry. Previously, he was involved in another corruption scandal. They shifted him to the Ministry of Defense. So, you see, it's just... Um, they just, they keep, playing, they just keep canonizing them. Yeah. And then they demonize everyone who's trying to come out. I don't think, Mr. President, there is anything else that young people shouldn't be annoyed about and with the uh, foreign funding that is um, that is very, I don't want to say because it's civic stress, but that is very annoying. For example, you have people dying, you have people not accessing the bare minimum of any government, you have people struggling to go to schools, people have to wake up and cross rivers and lakes to go to school, you don't have electricity, you don't have a job, you don't have a functioning road transport, your LOC5 is corrupt. <laughs> the LC1 to the president, you can't access any service. To an extent, that even when you go to the district itself, someone you have to first pay to see an LC1 chairperson over sale. A sale that has only 200 people. And you think that then the option should be go through the right channels. The right channels are failed. And when you say, carry your petition to the parliament, and you do what with it. You leave it on the table. I think this is a matter of urgency. Because the more corruption goes on, as a country, we have discovered oil, yeah? We have started exploiting our own oil. Now, imagine the corruption that will actually exist. Because happening. I think history has been there over and over again. Countries that have oil, Nigeria, Angola, these are countries that are perpetually in corruption. When you look at um, Angola, it produced one of the richest um, women uh, in Africa, in the world, actually. But who was it? The first doctor. <laughs> because why? She was in the oil business. And right now, you find that even the people controlling... Um, the oil, let's say you got a national oil company, the CEO is Jim Wes's daughter. And those are the positions that as Ugandans are supposed to be competing for. And <laughs> this corruption will likely go into even the, the value that you're saying our oil is going to bring for us. When someone says, say stop eco, the reason I would support them is because I wouldn't get to see the benefit of eco. Mm. Like, what is it going to help me as an individual if you're already corrupting it even in its mm. initial stages, yeah? So I think it's now, or never. We need corruption to end. Because we have already seen what it has done to us, our systems. Yeah. When you know that you can't get a child in King's College who has probably six, but you have to go through a minister who is just going to give the award and say, I want this child in this school. Or you're likely going not to get in the great schools. And you know where the rest of us go? Like a drink, you pee and you see. Mm. So you find that these are problems that we are initially facing as young people. They're not just beyond they're not just an item must reside. They are grassroots problems. We feel them every day. You study, you get your nice grades, but you can't get in a school. Why? Right? You're competing with a minister's chef, who is later going to go outside in the UK. But they're telling you, oh, I studied in UPE, I'm the product of UPE. <laughs> Why isn't your child a product of UPE? Why yeah. is it that when you need health care, you're going to fly out to, to South Africa, to uh, Nairobi? To Nairobi, just here. Yeah. Imagine, in East Africa. But you can't even afford to bring that good hospital in Lago. In 2021, our area MP came with knickers with, <laughs> to, to give to ladies with his head on. Which area is this? I, I, <laughs> I won't say it for now. With his picture on the knickers, every man was against this man. <laughs> but ladies were shouting, this is our man. He has come to redeem us. Ever since they voted him in power, 
He has never come back to the village. Yeah. Now in 2025. Do you remember the photo of that MP who commissioned? <laughs> 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 yeah, I remember him and was like, I've given them a bridge. Okay. <laughs> the Do next day it was taken ceremony. by water. A the next day it was taken by, by water. Do you know the funding for that ceremony cost more than the bridge? <laughs> <laughs> that's a now, previously when I was in Rukonji, the contestant, I don't, I don't mind saying it, in the municipality, yeah? Okay. He established boreholes. Okay, I don't know. In Rinyangu it's called the Midgano. I don't know. And he was arrested for? <laughs> what was those things that bring water out of the ground? Uh -huh. They're not necessarily boreholes. And the MP, the current MP, went to the police and sued him. Like, oh, how do you bring boreholes? I remember. Yeah. yeah. Like, how? As who? Let people let yes. people want want water. And 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 and, and, and you see, the funny part is that now in 2025, I I, I saw now he has launched. Uh, he wants to start teaching. I I don't know. He says that he wants to teach people how to use what? I I, I, I even don't know. <laughs> now in 2025, <laughs> he's going to come back to the village With and his put. Knickers? I, th I think with his knickers, <laughs> with, with salt, <laughs> with what, and people are actually going to vote him okay. again. Okay. So, exactly. Drake, what is the problem? Is it that people do don't see that remember? they are being manipulated? Do you, do you guys, what is the problem? Do you guys remember? I was contesting to be a good president, you know that. Yes. You and, have money. That's and, and, and I didn't have money. And someone, <laughs> and I was independent, and someone would tell you that you can be the greatest leader we have ever seen for this campus right. but man you don't have something you give us you give us 1k and and and, and we win and and man i can tell you that the votes that i got were the people that believed in me and i had like half of the votes of the university but i couldn't win because in the evenings of the election that's when you, you, that, that's when things stand and i couldn't everyone was think was singing ai ai for good started singing the name of the other part and i was like what is happening by the end of the day the bottom line is that for you to enter the system now it looks like you have to play the cards of the system people don't understand what is happening like i always question people can't you see that you're being manipulated you, that someone is going to give you a nick and you vote them so what is the problem, Drake? You're talking yes, about yes, all yes. these things. Do you remember? Let me just make you guys more angry. Mm -hmm. Remember the news that uh, they used billions of Uganda shillings to teach people to teach people how to drink coffee? <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> you know, every day in this country there is a scandal. <laughs> Last week, you remember what? You remember the the what the scandal? That vanished. Yeah. How do you open Eighteen a billion to. <laughs> I am <laughs> saying, how do you open? A you guys like, just last week, like an embassy in a casino, and you're saying uh, the consignment were shares that came, and then you're allowing them to be shipped in, and then you expect us, <laughs> oh, you're being funded by foreigners. Maybe That's one last statement. <laughs> um, in my hometown, one of the contestants had been an MP for like I think 20 years. He's still an MP. Yeah, she, no, 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 she, because she lost, mm -hmm. she had oh. been, she had, uh, yeah, yeah, she had been an MP for like 20 years and then they asked her, what have you done for us? She was like, I have built for you a prison. It is there. <laughs> <laughs> it is there. <laughs> you are joking. And that is, no, and that is an achievement. <laughs> Someone is saying, don't you have a prison? You guys are joking. My area MP was put together for five years, was put in jail yeah. for that corruption scandal. And you people, when he was released from prison, 2021, he came back. And he came oh, back, not no. shamelessly. Do you know what it means to lack shame in this country? Oh, he came back to stand for the position. The only thing that saved us from this is that NRM refused. The people in NRM, you know that one. <laughs> the, the what the what, what is, decided to what is she uh, saying? Ours, who was over. corrupt. He's when still, when he he's came back, he was appointed. He, he was he was given a ministry, now, now and he's someone that rooted the money for Choga. For Choga, the global funds, the Tasso guy. Yeah, that's the Tasso guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> guy. <laughs> yeah, guy. <laughs> so so. Covid, you know, a scandal where uh, we were vaccinated with borehole water. Yeah. Yes, and uh, compared to the vaccine that we're supposed to get, I think these are things that should make us should. enough angry. Not for the foreign funders, not homosexuality. So that country should stop. Our, ta our, take home, our take home should be what can we do to convince these people down there mm -hmm. who are given salt, who are given 1,000, and they are gain and, and, they get and, 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 and they are gain cast a vote to this person that has done nothing. I think that should be our take home. 
what is that one thing that we can tell them for them to change? Because me as a person, I've tried. I, 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 tell, I always tell my grandmother that that one K is not enough. And then she'll tell you that, but I can eat it and, do, uh, and I wouldn't go and vote. So let me just take it because it is the only survivor I'll get from this person. Because I know once he's in power, he's, he's never going to come back. Even the genuine people are not actually accepted these mm. days because someone is going to tell you, but that is the same thing that Denise told us. How, how sure are we that you're going to be different? So when Denise comes with now a 1K, no, Denise, be Denise becomes <laughs> a, a, a better person. So our take home should be, what's that one thing that these people need to critically understand that the problem is with us, the people who are actually voting, those guys that are manipulating us with small funding. Okay. Thank you. You take home. Mine is that as the youth ourselves, before we go to the grassroots, we have failed. We have failed. We have failed. We have failed to educate ourselves. But you can't have a phone, the same phone I have. You can't have data, the same data I have. And what are you accessing? What information are you accessing? You don't know what's happening in your country. You don't know what's happening in your neighborhood. You don't know what's happening in your homes. You don't, you don't know anything. You have failed. You have failed as citizens. You have failed as human beings. You have failed as people who say they desire more out of this world. And it, the world is going to continue punishing you for, for not... For not educating yourself. Utilize your phones, you guys. If you don't buy a newspaper, it's okay. Data. You have data. The same data you're using to WhatsApp me. I beg. Go on also. <laughs> Just you people. <laughs> people. This, is, this has been actually, this has been a disheartening experience. Mm -hmm. Completely disheartening. My one, my one thing is that the youth, the elites, the so-called, you by the way, you're not elite. Let me make this clear. You're not elite. <laughs> You know, so you're one malaria case away from poverty. Mm -hmm. Like, po not even, not even a cancer, not even, not even a kidney problem. A one stomach upset. Malaria. <laughs> <laughs> upset. One stomach upset away from abject poverty. Let me tell you, if your parents are away, and this should be a check for you, if your parents are away, if your parents lose their jobs, if your parents, um, if your guardian is not around, would you be able to go to a hospital? To on access your on your own. Yeah. If you cannot, you have failed yourself by not educating yourselves. Let me just make that objectively clear. Because that, if this last week, I've been called reactionary. I've been called divisive. I've been called someone who is just, you know, out for cloud because I have spoken. You need to side. give us on the man of prayer now. Just, you just, after here, you find me. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you guys, this has been disappointing. I am completely disappointed in the young people of this country. And the four of us are sitting on this panel. We happen to know just slightly a bit more. I don't think I even know enough. I have learned so much from this panel. And that is an indicator that something is wrong. That is an indicator that something is wrong. Our brothers and sisters in Kenya and in the rest of the world are able to take the stances they have because they're able to have educated themselves. If you sit on a border, you should be able to tell your border guy something new about what's happening in his country. If you go to a shop and there's a conversation, you should be able to contribute something new because you are in a position of privilege, however minimal that privilege is. And it is your duty, if you desire more out of this world, to aspire to educate someone, to aspire to know more. Guys, buy data and utilize it. If you can't take to the streets, take to your status. If you can't take to your status, take to your Twitter. If you can't take to your Twitter, do something. You cannot just exist. You can't just exist. That's shameful. That's shameful. And when people like me speak out, either do not keep quiet. You guys, do not keep quiet. But do not come to, my, do, do not come to us telling us that we are being divisive. Because people, we are, we are angry. We're angry now, and that anger will find its place. Let me just say one last thing. <laughs> Growing up, yeah. we, we used to go to churches, and, and, and our parents used to, used to tell us that if you sin, <coughs> God is going to punish you. Also, I'm also calling out to God. Why don't, <laughs> why don't you punish these people? <laughs> because I mean, God is also silent. <laughs> 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 like, even in his... Uh, one, one I'm just calling out God. God also punished these people because I, I, I also don't understand. Because we used to know that if you sin, then you're punished. 
but we can't see any punishment. But these sinners are the ones that are living the, the life that we, we look forward to having. We're the good Christian. Yeah. Drake, just 10 seconds. Mm. I mean, the thing is, now that we're <laughs> on the topic of God, people, your religious leaders have kept quiet. I've only seen one video from St. Luke in Tinder where the guy has abjectly spoken out. Some, some other religious leader came out and said, corruption is bad, or corruption is terrible, mm. it does all these things. We know corruption is bad, that's why people are on the streets. Tell us something different. People were drugged, people were stripped. I think it was you, Drake, that sent me the video of a lady being stripped for holding out a placard. And your religious leaders, the people, the messengers of God, God the Almighty, God the Good, God the, my God whose hand is everywhere, what, what? have kept quiet. What would, what would you want eating. Pastor Wajingo to say <laughs> if, if, if his church is, is funded by the first sure. fan? What people, would you want him to say? Let's have some shame. Tell us <laughs> your religious leaders. Oh God. Anyway, my, my, my last... Um, my last words would be very few. If our forefathers woke up today for the independence they fought, for the dream to see a better Uganda, they would be met by bad roads, by... Um, Even worse than when they were alive. Exactly. Sure. The education system has failed, the health system has failed, everything in the country has failed, and then you have the arrogancy of your ministers, of your leaders, who are literally going to drive on roads a one way because they are privileged. The politics of Uganda have become that when you go into a public office, you must be richer, yet you're supposed to serve people. When you're an MP, it's not a job, you're serving people. But these are the richest people in our country. So these are things that should make you annoyed and know that you have something to do. When you go to your grassroots, please show up and vote. Because the next five years, 2026 to 2030, we shall be complaining about the same things if you don't vote. You are saying about educating your grandmothers, your parents, but we are the largest population. If we voted right now, we could get the change that we even need, <laughs> like father. But then that, that, of course, if you're not bribed. What, one of the presidential <laughs> candidates said that he will never stand again just because he doesn't believe in elections. And that is an opposition leader that we believe in. And that's the last thing I'm leading with. <laughs> Stop nonpartisan. Um, let's yeah. stop nonpartisan politics. Saying that this political party is largely going to be led by this uh, particular ethnic group. I think, and that is what has largely affected the politics of Uganda. Saying that this political party is probably for this. And when we come to elections, it becomes a show of those that have the largest number. For example, if you say I'm opposition, make it nonpartisan. And that's why this struggle needs to be recognized. I'm not NUP, I'm not FDC, I'm not NRA, of course I can never be. It's <laughs> not ANT, it's not anything. So how do I ensure that I am going to be able to have a nonpartisan political party and doesn't become a show who has the largest ethnic group? And the last thing I'm going to say, do not elect Hainas and expect them to take care of God. And stop being a political, you guys. It's in politics that your life and death is decided. <laughs> yeah, I just had it. Big interest in politics, guys. Things are bad, and personally, I could, I could, I could speak for the entire time about this. I come from the poorest region in Man. the country. Up to now, in my village, we don't have electricity. And I'm in the municipality. <laughs> I come from. Who is a city? And when you go on, on an and, what? Yeah, the most annoying thing is that when you speak uh, uh, your mind, when you speak your problems that you actually that are actually affecting you, someone is going to say, but you're a And someone will like, we shall continue the conversation. Keep the conversation going on in the comment section. But I have to say this mm. before we go. Just last week, <laughs> just last week, a friend of mine was in, uh, in, in Moroto. Children have become security persons. Oh, Can you imagine? Like children, security persons. What do you mean by security persons? Because the state wants to build an airstrip, obviously. Uh, the for the gold? For the, for the, gold, the minerals? For the minerals. And guess what? The children are what? Person health. Uh, let me, pass, no, no, let me first say something. You guys That's were recently. I, I got a phone from my friend showing children. Children, you know, children <laughs> who are our brothers and sisters, comrades. <laughs> and come to and you be the agents of God. And you have no right. See you next week. <laughs>